Andrew Tate. Um, wait, 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 I have a, one more question. Why don't you like him? Because he's a fucking asshole. Well, my question is, why don't you like him? Because he's a misogynistic asshole who okay, define really misogyny. trafficked women. He didn't, though. Do you know who Andrew Tate is? Yeah. Do you like him? No. Why? Because I just think he says a lot of misogynistic stuff. Do you know who Andrew Tate is? Yes, I do. Do you like him? No. Why? He He's really misogynistic. Do you know who Andrew Tate is? Yes. Do you like him? Fuck no. Why? Because he fucking sucks. Okay, that's not a reason. Do you, do you have a reason why you don't like him? He's a misogynist. Define misogyny. I'm not fucking doing this. What's, what's wrong? Do you know who Andrew Tate is? Uh, yeah, I mean... Okay, uh, what are your opinions on him? <laughs> um... Do you like him? No. Why? Because he's a misogynist. Misogynists are disgusting whether they're in Afghanistan or a swanky London studio. Am I a misogynist, am I? I don't think, I, first of the things she said I don't even truly believe. But it's, I can, if you're prepared to listen to me, I'll explain to you exactly why she's utterly, completely and utterly wrong. If you can go through the points again, she well, said do, one Do you by think one. you're a misogynist? Absolutely not. I'm not a misogynist on any level. This is one of those buzzwords they throw at and they just throw at people randomly. Homophobic, racist, misogynist, they just throw it out at people. What is I'm, your view of women? I'm a realist. What is your real view of women? I absolutely not really love women. I adore women. I have good relationships with women. Not a single woman has come up to me on the street since I've been canceled. Not a single one has said anything negative. Every single one of them has said positive things. You're a traditional male. I wish more men were like you. You understand your masculine roles. You understand what you're supposed to do. You understand you're supposed to protect women. You're exactly the kind of man I'd be looking for. I've never had a negative interaction with a female ever since I've been dubbed the biggest misogynist Where in the world. Is the please, please let me finish. I'm sorry, sorry, Pierce. Also, there's not been a single woman who's accused me of a crime, not a single woman who's accused me of rape, not a single woman who's come out and said anything from my entire past of 36 years I've done anything wrong ever. Anybody else with my level of fame, any footballer, any other movie star, at least has people who've come out and accused them of rape, X, Y, Z. I have no woman who's come out and ever said I've hurt her. No woman who's come out and ever said I've done damage to her or been horrible to her. Everybody who ever interacted with me has said I've been a nice person. All of them. Here's so this okay. random Twitter nobody who seems to know so much is full of... All right, you, you've responded to her tweet. Yeah, uh, she's a liar. But here's what, where is the line for you between masculinity, which I will always defend, and which I agree with. I think a lot of women like men to be masculine, and, and what has become known as toxic masculinity. And the reason I ask you is that you are engaged in that debate with men all the time. Where is the line for you where men shouldn't cross, where the behavior should be kept within a line? Please define toxic masculinity. Well, you tell me what you think it crosses a line from being a masculine good man to a bad man. There's no such thing as too much masculinity if it's genuinely masculine. Genuine masculinity is not out here to hurt people. It's absolutely the opposite. It's out here to protect. And when bad things happen, they call traditionally masculine men. If you need a firefighter, you need a masculine man. When you call the police because of the problem you had, you want masculine men. And as soon as a woman or a man is in trouble, when you look for backup, you look for masculine men. And masculine men have a duty to provide and protect those they care about. We have a duty to do things we don't feel like doing because we know we're supposed to do them. And that's why we stayed in the Titanic and died. Those were masculine where did, men. Where did you get your views about this from? It's what I grew up with. It's the family I grew up around. And your the, father, and, your mother, Yeah, both? And, and the world I lived in. And I think a lot of the things I'm saying now about masculinity and how people should act in the world how the world should function were considered completely normal and accepted by everybody only 20 years ago. I think the world's just lost its mind. For me to stand up and say a man should protect a woman now gets to be called a misogynist and canceled. If I said that 10 years ago, everyone would say, duh. And what's funny is everyone who argues against me and says men shouldn't protect women, especially all the feminists, if they were with their boyfriend and a man broke into their house, guess who they'd expect to go downstairs? Who do you think? Think they go themselves? Are they going to Afghanistan? No, we send men to do these things. So well, we, send women, we send women in the armed forces too. We, you have to generalize when you make points. There are many, many courageous exceptions, people. Exceptions women in the do armed not forces. disprove the rule. No, but there, you've got to concede there are many courageous women serving in the armed forces. Absolutely and utterly, completely correct. But by and large, traditionally, soldiers are men. Exceptions do not disprove the rule. Well, it's not an exception. It's a fact that there are a lot of women now in the armed forces. Correct. But if you were to take the average soldier, they are a male. If you're allowed to say who's a male and who isn't nowadays, I'm assuming their gender, I apologize. If you were to take the average soldier, they're a male, which means that exceptions are the female soldiers, which because there's a lower percent of them, a lower probability, exceptions do not disprove the rules. Men do the fight. What right now say? in Ukraine, men cannot leave. Women are allowed to leave because men have to fight in the front line and women are allowed to go to Dubai. That is how it is. 
What do you say to young men who come to you for advice, who feel lost, who don't really know where they fit into society? I say that life as a man is exceptionally difficult. I say the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing about being a man is you're born without value. Society doesn't care about you. You're only going to be cared about based on how useful you are. You have the chance to build yourself up and become a superhero if you're prepared to do the hard work and be indefatigable enough to never quit. But if you're going to stand around and wait for a handout, nobody's going to ever respect you. And I think that a lot of people have forgotten about how difficult and how competitive it is as a man. We're always in constant competition with each other. And it's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I want to be as important and strong and good-hearted and God-fearing as possible. And I need to work hard to achieve those things. Dame Sheila Hancock says we've become too over-emotional as a society, crying too much about everything. Has she got a point? She's completely right. And the dangerous thing about overly emotional men is that they're dangerous. They're genuinely dangerous. This is what's crazy. All these people who talk about toxic masculinity and how bad it is for men to be traditionally masculine. A traditionally masculine man does things he doesn't feel like doing because it is his duty to do them. He charges into the burning building because it is his duty. Not because he feels like it, because it is his duty. We're now teaching the new generation of men that they don't have duty and they can just act on their feelings and act how they feel and they don't have to act as a man should. Do you know what happens when you get men who just act how they feel? You get school shooters, you get violence, you get rapists. Men who do not control their emotions are dangerous. If you find a man who is stoic, he's not going to hurt people. He's going to sit and think about his actions very carefully, and he's going to be a good man who protects for it and provides for his family. You find a man who just acts out on impulse and does whatever he feels like, you're going to find a dangerous man. Sitting here telling men to cry more and act with their feelings and it's okay to feel this way, that way, etc., and have no self-control. That is why we have the problems we have in the world. Absolutely not really wrong. So when they talk about toxic masculinity, they have it completely inversed on its head. Completely not really wrong. We need to be teaching stoicism. We need to be teaching young men to understand that the world is very, very difficult. It's hard to be a man. You're going to feel bad sometimes. You need to suck it up and perform anyway. Not to sit there, you cry your eyes out or blame other people. Tough or being cough a out. woman too in modern society. It's certainly tough being a woman, but I'm not a woman, so why would I speak on issues I do not understand? I'm a man. You can feel empathy for women. I feel empathy, certainly, but I do not understand their issues. See, a lot I of men come up to me and they admire you. I've got to say, a lot of women I've spoken to don't admire. They think you represent misogyny. They think when they hear you not commit to saying the Taliban shouldn't be banning women from university education, why can't he just say that's wrong? Well, firstly, that's not my experience. I experienced the absolute and utter opposite of that. Secondly, it's because it's a moral point I'm making. My moral point is that I speak on things I understand. I speak on experiences I've had. Would you believe on, in equality? I speak, yes. I Do speak you? on, uh, sure. I speak on subjects I know intimately. I do not feel qualified. I'm a realist and I do not feel qualified to sit and discuss the gender laws in Afghanistan. I have not been to Afghanistan. I have not researched the subject thoroughly. I'm not going to sit here and say how the Taliban should be running their country. It's nothing to do with me. I find it quite flattering, Piers, that although, you know, I understand I'm monumentally influential, the most Google man on earth, etc. I find it very flattering that you think I have some kind of control over the domestic policy of Afghanistan. But I assure you, I don't. I don't. No, no, so I'm, it's not, nothing to do I'm with not asking you to have a view on having uh, influence on the domestic policy. I'm sure the Taliban couldn't give a stuff what either of us say about it. Um, it's just curious to me that it's an easy win for you to make women think you're not anti them, to say that when they're not given equality, as the women in Afghanistan clearly are not, because they're not allowed to go to university now, as of today, that is clearly unequal, unfair. We should all be able to agree that that is wrong. Well, Certainly, as a realist. Even you, tough guy, I, I, Andrew. It's said. not a tough guy. I am a professional. As a professional, I can state that yes, it is not equal. Yes, it is not fair. That is obvious for anybody. I'm not saying those things are not true. What I'm saying is, it's nothing to do with me. Right.